I'm Sharon Betters, and I want to welcome you to this special resource that is produced by Mark Inc. Ministries. Mark Inc. is a nonprofit organization. Our goal is to produce resources that offer help and hope to the hurting. If you visit our website at markinc.org, that's M-A-R-K-I-N-C.org, you'll find many, many stories of help and hope that might fit your circumstances or uh, the life of someone that you know and love who needs help and hope. We try to address the life crises that are often experienced in isolation or that are difficult to talk about or difficult for friends and family to know how to help the person who is experiencing them. And so on our website, you'll find stories that address losing a loved one. My husband and I share the story of losing our 16-year-old son and our journey through grief. You'll find stories about battling cancer, about adultery and forgiveness. You'll find a series that are addressed to military families that offer help and hope to military families. We are offering stories for help of help and hope for families who have children with special needs. And the list just goes on and on. And so I hope that you'll visit our website, markinc.org, and check out those free resources. Uh, every one of them is free. Today in the studio, I have with me Shelly Tribbett and Bay Gibson, and their story is unique. We're going to be talking about addiction and drug abuse and the impact on families, but that's not the end of the story. You're going to be encouraged by what you hear in this transparent conversation. So I want to welcome Shelly and Bay as they are ready to share their story, I know that it's going to touch the hearts of a lot of people. And so, Shelley, you and I met a while ago, and I heard from a couple people that said, you know what, you need to talk to Shelley and get her to tell you her story. And so, as you know, we went out to lunch, and you shared your story. And the more you shared, I thought, we have to share this story with a bigger audience, because... You're so transparent about the things that happened in your life that led to a lot of hurt and a lot of brokenness, a lot of darkness. And then you are also, though, a picture of redemption. And so welcome, Shelley. I'm so glad you're here. And of course, in the studio also is Bay, and Bay is Shelley's daughter. And Bay is a unique part of this story, too. So I am so grateful to both of you for your willingness to share your own story. So, Shelley, why don't we start with you? Um, you, your story, we've already said we're going to be talking about drug addiction. But before we talk about that, why don't we talk a little bit about when you were growing up, you lived with your parents. Tell us a little, about, a little bit about your childhood. I grew up in a city called Chester, Pennsylvania, And I grew up in a two-parent home with a mother and a father. And I'm the youngest of seven children. And as I was growing up, I just remember my brothers and my sisters, they all took care of me. And at the age of, of 15, we had a house fire. And I didn't want to stay there any longer because I saw what my mom went through. She was uh, uh, cleaning up the very next morning, the fire, you know, the damages. And so I asked, could I move with my oldest sister and her husband? And she agreed to that, her and my dad. And I moved with my oldest sister and her husband. And at that time, I was in high school, and I went to Chester High, and I kind of took a hold of a little freedom after not being, you know, under my mom and my dad's care, just, you know, being with my sister and her and her husband. I had friends, and I began to go out and to party and to indulge in, in alcohol. It wasn't too much too many drugs, but, but it was mainly alcohol. And I remember even having um sex at an early age. 
So you were around 15 when all these changes started taking place in your life. And that's, I think it's pretty typical what you're describing of teenagers with that kind of freedom. And probably there are parents listening who are saying they don't need that kind of freedom to indulge in that kind of behavior. You know, my kids out there uh, rebelling against the way that I raise them. So as you, um, you're living with your sister, did you live with her through the rest of your high school years? Yes, actually, I lived with my sister and her husband until around like around 22 years old when I got my own place. But a lot happened in between. Tell us a little bit about that. I got pregnant and I had my first, my daughter, right after I graduated from high school. And so you were you were a single mom? Yes, I was a single mom. And I got my own place because my sister put me on her lease. And I got my own place. And I just began to take care of my daughter and to live on my own with the help of my sister or my family at times. After that, it, it, it just seemed like I had a lot of freedom You know, I thought that being out on your own, you could, you know, you could do anything that you wanted to do. And I I believe that's when it started. So what were some of the things that you did? You said anything you wanted to do, which implies these are things that maybe were outside the box or risky. What, What were some of those things? Well, some of the things, starting off with sex, without being married, and then, and then uh, drinking, I wasn't too much into drugs at that time. Mm. So with the alcohol, um, I mean, did you feel as though you were overindulging in alcohol, or did you feel like, well, I can handle this? That's Mm. not a big deal. No, I thought I could handle it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. I always thought that. About everything. About everything. Yeah. And so, but now looking back, was the alcohol a precursor to drug use, do you feel? Yes, so how did you get started on drugs, and what, what kind of drugs? Well, I got started on drugs with, first of all, sniffing cocaine, and that led to smoking cocaine. Was this in a, like with parties, when you were out partying? Is that how you were first introduced, or was this something you did while you were by yourself? No, I was with uh, my friends, and we were up actually on top of a bar, and then with a hotel on top. Mm -hmm. And I was introduced by a male. We were introduced by a male and smoking the cocaine. And actually I said, oh, I I enjoyed it at that time. And I said, oh, this is is okay. You know, I like the way I felt. Oh, I can handle this. Nothing's going to happen. And the next thing I know, I'm away from everyone and I'm doing it everything on my own. So that's when I knew that I was addicted to drugs because right. I could do everything. So when you were on, you're saying that you were using drugs on your own or you said you were away from everything. What do you mean by that? I mean, away from everyone. I didn't have to have. It was pleasure at first. And it was, it was a social thing at first. But then it became a thing where I just left them, the people, the people that I would hang around with, and I did it on my own. Because? Why? Because I believe that that's where my addiction started. I, th- I remember when we had lunch, you said, um, I, I'm, I probably won't be able to remember the exact words, but it was once you've tried it, you know, that it's, like you said, you liked it. And there was the feeling that you wanted to get that same feeling again, and you're chasing that that initial feeling. Yes. It only comes once, and that's what we're chasing after. We're chasing after the wind because the feeling only comes once when you first get it. Mm-hmm. And after that, that's what you want, the continued feeling of that particular, at that particular time. It's. I think it's really important to try to, understand that for someone who is has never experienced it is not addicted because people who have loved ones who are addicted to drugs it's it's like they they must be saying and I've heard them say why can't you just stop why won't you just stop when you see what you're doing to your family or how much it's costing you why won't you just stop and so I'll ask you that question why didn't you just stop using drugs at at 
at an early point? I couldn't. Not on my own anyway. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. It had me. Did you ever try? Yes, several times. Several times I tried. So you have a daughter. Yes. Uh, Do you have any other children? Yes, I have two other children. And were they born while you were using drugs during that period? Yes. Yes, my youngest daughter actually lived with me during the addiction, when I was in my addiction. And how long was that addiction? Well, I think that addiction was for like 20, maybe 20 or 25 years. 25 years of drug abuse. So, Bay, you're a little girl, and your mother is abusing drugs, using drugs. What kind of impact did that have on you? Oh, wow. Um, I can remember as a little girl just being angry and mad, hurt, and wanting my mother. I can remember going to school and hanging with my friends and my friends saying, well, my mom, me and my mom did this, or my mom and I did that, and so I'm just spending time with their mother. And I can remember times when my mom didn't come home and I would wait for my mom to come home and how much pain that was. And and I actually was feeling hate, hate, Toward your mom? So, towards my mom, yes. How old were you? I believe in middle school, so I had to be probably like 12 or 11 in middle school. Did you know that she was using drugs? Did you know that that was the problem? Not in the beginning, but eventually, yeah. I, my grandmother, because I was staying with my grandmother, and I would hear conversation, yeah. When did you start living with your grandmother? I think around in middle school, probably 7th or 6th grade. And Shelly, was that your decision, or was that, uh, did your mom say, okay, that's enough, I'm taking the kids? How did that happen? No, um, we all lived with, with her at one time. Okay. Yeah, I always went back to my mom's, mm-hmm. you know, more than once. So some of the time, your grandmother was raising you, but your mother was always in the picture. My mother was there, but my yes, my grandmother was raising me. Yeah, it was times, like I said, my mom wouldn't come home, so we wouldn't see my mom for days, and we had no idea where my mom was. But then when, we, she, when she did come home, I would hear the conversation between my grandmother and my mother and the arguing and the fighting and all of those things that came with it. So, um, Shelley... What what were you thinking when you would take off like that about your kids? I mean, did you how how could you leave your kids like that? Actually, I really don't know at that time. I didn't know, but I do know now that it hurted everyone that was connected to me. But I didn't know how much. I wasn't thinking of my children. I wasn't thinking of of my mother. I wasn't thinking of my family. I was just thinking about the high, what I wanted to feel. I wanted to feel pleasure. So uh, someone who's addicted to drugs, that's what's in front of them. Nothing else matters except for getting the next fix and and looking for that first sensation. Bay, what are some of your most painful memories from that time? Um... I can remember my mom and my grandmother arguing because I believe my mom used to stole a check, her checkbook, and my grandmother stomping and yelling and hollering and screaming. And, and then my mom would leave and just not knowing when she was coming back, not knowing what's going to happen to her, not knowing what's going to happen to us. And then also later, just my mom going out uh, with guys and leaving us, too. So that was another very painful thing, just leaving us, period, and just choosing. It seemed that she was choosing everything else over us. Did that hurt find its way into your behavior? Did you act out? I mean, were you rebellious, or did you try to be a good girl so that you wouldn't feel any of that pain, so that you would have a place to live? How did, how did it affect you emotionally and in your, in your interactions with other people? No, I didn't act out. I didn't act out. I did have a strong support system, my grandmother and my aunts. So, no, I didn't act out. And were those your mom's sisters yes. that were there yes. for you? Yes, yes. Shelly, I can't imagine some of the things that you must have experienced during your drug addiction. What What are some of the 
more difficult things that you remember? Um, some of the difficult things were I sold my body for drugs. I had sex to get drugs. I was abused. I actually have a plate on the left side of my face. I had a tripod fracture. Was that from someone beating you? Yes. I was hit in the face when I tried to run. And I was in a lot of abusive relationships. Most of, mostly all of my relationships had was wrapped around drugs. Uh, my oldest two children's father, um, my other, I've been married twice, and I was abused by both of my husbands. It didn't last long. The marriage lasted less than a year. I'd experienced so much pain, and I felt like I, when I was getting high, I felt like I was in hell. I would be so scared. Sometimes I would think a knock would come on the door. Somebody was going to come to get me. I would think that a rat or anything would jump up in my face. I remember counting one, two, three. I mean, it had gotten to a point where I, I was just tired. I was scared. But in the beginning, it was pleasure. It was doing something that I thought was fun until it grabbed me and I could do nothing else. I felt like I was in the spider's web. Shelly, did people try to talk to you? I mean, your mother was angry with you because you took her checks. But did other people try to talk to you and try to convince you you're on the wrong path, you've got to stop this? Oh, yes. She had my oldest brother. I remember one day she had my oldest brother come upstairs and try to talk to me, and I just wouldn't receive it. I was I was in something that I actually couldn't get out of. So, Bay, did you ever talk to your mom? Did you ever try to convince her, you know, Mommy, please stop this? I did once I became an adult. For years, I just I hated my mom. I I, I did. I hated her. I hated the fact that I didn't have a relationship with my mom and my other friends did. We didn't do things together. And that question you said, like, why do you do it? Like, I couldn't understand that. For so many years, I asked myself, why? Don't you see? Because not only did my mom, was my mom addicted to drugs, but I had a lot of other family members addicted to drugs, my uncles, and, and I saw a lot. And I just couldn't understand. If you see other people in the way they act, why would you do it? Why would you do drugs? How could you even start it? So I just couldn't understand that for years as an adult. I began to learn my mom, so I knew when she was using drugs again. We were in church, but I could still tell when my mom was using drugs. It's just I could just look at her and see it. And so I remember asking my husband and saying to my husband, like, why won't she just stop? Like, she does it, and she goes a long time and not use drugs, but then she goes right back to it. Why can't she just stop? And I'm still like, oh, I don't get it. I don't understand it. And then I was like, I'm going to I'm going to say something. And, but I said, you know, I'm not going to say it until God gives me the right words to say. And and it took me a while. I prayed and I worried and I and then I um, finally said, I'm going to call my mom and I'm not going to be, you know, angry and I'm not going to be hateful. And I called her. I told her, I said, um, I'm praying for you. I know that um Exactly. Remember, I know that you're using drugs, and I don't understand, and I don't know why, but I want you to know that I'm praying for you. Do you remember that, Shelly? Yes, I do. I remember my daughter calling me, and she said to me, Mom, you think I don't know what you're doing? She said, but you need help. And the way that she said it, I received it because it didn't sound like it came from her. Mm. She said it, but it came from somewhere else. So there was something different something in the way that different. she was communicating to you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I want to come back to that to see what happened after that. But 
but first bay were you tempted to use drugs you lived in a in a sounds like you lived lived in an environment where drugs were part of the culture part of your neighborhood part of your life your school probably yes i was tempted i hung out with my friends and we hung in the projects and we hung around guys that would bag up their drugs their cocaine and chop it up with the razor, and I would see all this, and I was around all this, and my friends would say, Bay, come on, let's try it. And no, I wouldn't. I just didn't understand. Like, I saw what was going on with my mom, like I said, and my uncles, and I, I would not do it. No, so I've never done And you've drugs. never done it. No. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. That is amazing. What were what some of the price tag, Shelley, of your drug use? I mean, how did you support getting drugs? Well, actually, I had I always worked, and this had a a, a, a good way of of hiding it. You know, sometimes I would run out of money, and then I would ask like my family, somebody in my family, to borrow some money, and I would lie, said I needed it for this and I needed it for that, but I didn't. And then even to the point of borrowing money from people at work, my coworkers. I would ask to borrow money, but I would always pay them back. But I knew that it wouldn't last long. It wouldn't last long. Trying to hide and 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 they they call it a functioning addict. I don't believe that that is no such thing as a functioning addict. Mm-hmm. It's going to catch up with it's you eventually. It's going to catch yeah. up with you eventually. Yeah. Did your coworkers know that you were using? I don't believe so. So you had it down pretty good to be able to hide it from yes. them, but the people closest to you were very aware. Yes. Okay. They mentioned that she would see you at church and she would know that you were using drugs mm-hmm. and how upsetting it was to her. So, and apparently, Bay, you were married at the time when this would was yes. happening. Okay. So, how old were you when when you were attending church? Bay is recognizing that I had to be in my fifties. So you're older. Uh, yes. Yeah, you're yeah. older. And then you you tried to stop on your own, but that did not last. Mm-hmm. And, Bay, you could see that. You would stop, and then you would mm-hmm. start again. Bay calls you and really exhorts you that it's time. Mm-hmm. And you're in your 50s when you get this phone call. Mm-hmm. So what was your response to that phone call? My response was <laughs> I held my hands up, and I, and I, just, I just thank God. I thank God for that because without that interruption, you know, I don't know what I would have done. But how did you surrender? You you felt like something clicked inside of you that it was time to once and for all break this addiction. So how did you do that? Well, actually, before my daughter called me that day, when after I would when I was in church, and I really was convicted then because I would always go home. And after spending every last dime that I had, I would go home and I would get on my knees and I would cry to the Lord. I said, Lord, why do I keep doing this? Why? I don't understand. Every time, every single time I would get on my knees and I would cry out to the Lord. I said, please don't let anything drastic happen to make me stop doing what I'm doing. So when that time came, when she called me, I guess the Lord had prepared me. You stopped drugs cold turkey? Was that the last time you used drugs, or was it gradual? How did that happen? I believe that what I remember is I did have biblical counseling. I went to biblical counseling, first with my pastor's wife, and then with an elder of the church. And... I never went to rehabilitation center, but it was gradually because I remember even not doing it, not getting high for some years. And then one Christmas, I went back to Chester, Pennsylvania, because I lived in Delaware, and I looked up those people that I had got gotten high with all that time. And I went back and I got high. But when I went back that last time, when I left there, 
That was it. I believe I went back because I had a falling out with the people that I was getting high with. I even took some money from one of my so-called friends that I was getting high with. I stole money from her, and we had a falling out, so I couldn't go back to her house or to his house. But after some years, it was on Christmas, I remember. Obviously, you've mentioned uh, growing up in Chester, and when you wanted drugs, you knew where to go for drugs. You were able to go back, and you knew the the places to go. And so, so Bay, when you were saying that you'd never use drugs, the main reason is because of what you saw around you in your neighborhood and in your family and the price that that drugs demanded from those who were addicted. Now as an adult looking back, you know, looking back on your childhood, things haven't changed much in in the especially in the cities. Probably across the country, doesn't matter if it's cities or rural. I mean even over in a little town that's not far from here, it's known as the drug capital of our area. Looking back on your own childhood and growing up and you came out of it unscathed, what kind of counsel would you give to teenagers who are living in the same kind of a situation where the drugs, they're easy to get, they're available, maybe their family members are using, their friends are using, they're encouraging them. How in the world is a kid able to fight those kinds of pressures? What counsel would you give? The only thing I can say looking back is it had to be God. It wasn't even me. It had to be God. That's the only thing that I can see because of the pressure, the peer pressure and the environment and just being able to say no at that age, at 12 years old. And and actually, I still hung out with my friends. I'm just amazed. So it has to be God because it's easy for a child to give in to peer pressure to hang with their friends. And so I guess I can tell the children that say no, Mm -hmm. say no. And I still remain friends with them, but I I wouldn't recommend that you continue to hang with the people uh, that are doing drugs or asking you to do drugs. Mm -hmm. But that's the only thing I can say is it had to be God. Well, I think also it has to be God to know that the two of you are sitting here at this table together when you had such hurt and pain and anger toward your mother, how did that happen? How did the two of you begin to reconcile and have the relationship that you have today? I would see my mom coming to church and serving, doing different things in ministry. And and she now, was is, this, pr- is this after she stopped taking drugs? This was after I called her. And I would see her doing different things, and um, she would read in her Bible and stand in fellowship and communion, going to um, counseling, and it just it just touched me. It just touched me, and I just was like, I couldn't believe it. Like, thank you, God. And I remember, I think it was Mother's Day, and I gave a testimony. Was just so thankful to God about Him keeping us. But even during the time when she was using drugs, how he provided my aunts and my grandmother as a mother, provided me with the mother that I needed during those times. I was just thankful for how my mom, drawing closer to the Lord and serving and not using drugs anymore and coming around us, her family more, and we were doing things together and just growing, growing together. So... I can remember that Mother's Day. Mm. Was there ever a time, Shelley, where you asked Bay to forgive you? Yes, that was part of my um, my counseling, part of my homework. I had to go to each one of my children individually and ask for their forgiveness for not being the mother that I should have been to them. And and what was their response to you? And they all forgave me. All, all of them? All three of them forgave me. How... How, when you hear Bay talking about the hurts that she experienced, how does that make you feel when you listen to her talk about those hurts? When I hear her talk about it, I know that she was really, that I was really hurting those that I loved and that I wasn't living in reality, that the hurt is real. 
It's not just what you hear or what you see. The hurt is real. As a woman who has experienced forgiveness, not only from your children, but through the gospel of Jesus Christ, through the price that he paid for you, even though we experience forgiveness, we also, it's like we know there's, there are consequences to our behavior. So there are consequences that your children and others experience because of your behavior. How do you handle guilt? Do you still carry guilt or have you been able to let go of the guilt from uh, not being there for your children? By the grace and mercy of God, I've been able to let go of the guilt. Because I could think that, you know, as a mom, you might spend a lot of time thinking, man, I, I miss so much. I should have been there. I should have done this. I should have done that. But there's no way to go back yeah. and undo all of that. And so it really is a supernatural work of God's love for you to be able to look your daughter in the eye and know, yes, the hurt was there, but he has forgiven me and I can accept that forgiveness. Going through some of the things that I go through now, not being addicted to drugs is is helping me to understand what my children went through back then. Like being lonely. Sometimes I feel lonely. You know, sometimes I feel that I'm not loved. And she felt that. My children felt that at one time. But God has allowed me to go through some things that I'm feeling right now. But I know that it's only to build my character. That's good insight. That you're you're turning it to this is what my daughter felt. Yeah. What I'm feeling right now mm-hmm. is what my little girl felt. What is your relationship like today with uh with Bay? Oh, my relationship with Bay and is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I couldn't ask for a better daughter. And Bay, what do you what do you say to that? Yes. 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 <laughs> I definitely I definitely think we have a, a good relationship. We're still growing as mother and daughter, even with the grandkids and as a family together. Because sometimes I do I do, I have to be honest, I do sometimes feel like I think about, you know, what I miss, especially with me having my own daughters now. Because I do feel that, and that pops up every now and again, every now and then. <laughs> but um, I'm reminded quickly of God's Word. But yes, we definitely have a good relationship, and we're continually growing. You mentioned raising your own daughters, and, and sometimes that makes you realize what you missed. How has your childhood equipped you to be a better mother? How has God used the pain of your childhood to help you to parent your children? I would say spending time with them, doing a lot with them, being at the school for school plays, and just doing a lot of the mother and daughter things that I didn't have a chance to do coming up. Are the kids aware of your history, of your mom's history? My oldest daughter and my oldest son is. Do you ever talk about drug addiction with your kids? Yes. Yes, I do. I talk to my oldest son and my daughter about drug addiction. And I explain to them, I tell them exactly what I saw coming up, being around it, being asked to try it, and all of those things, yeah. You know, I really think it is remarkable. We don't understand why it seems like God pulls a brand out of the fire, you know, where Everything in your life pointed to you going down the same pathway as your mom. And yet, by God's grace, he pulled you out of the fire and protected you. I mean, Shelly, you probably look at that and just praise the Lord every single moment of every single day for the protection of your daughter to what he has done there. I think it's remarkable that the two of you have the relationship that you have. And I, I do think that because of Christ, that's we have to keep going back to the gospel of the fact of forgiveness, that he has for, forgiven us of our sins, each one of us. I mean, the, 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 what we're talking about right now is drug addiction, but every one of us has sin that uh, only he can forgive. And every one of us, I think, in our lives would ha- has regrets, 
where we would go back and say, I wish I'd done this, I wish I'd done that, you know. But he also removes the guilt from the sinner. And I think that's one of the most remarkable things that I see in you, Shelley, is the freedom that you have in Christ because he has supernaturally enabled you to let go of the guilt of the broken places behind you. You know, and I think that is that is a remarkable act of grace. And it is available. I hope that anyone who is listening right now who you may be in a place where you are like Shelley, where you have discovered freedom from the drug addiction, but you have a lifetime of hurts. I mean, Shelley has said it's it was 20, 30 years of abusing drugs. And so that is a lifetime of broken relationships. And yet here Shelly is today in a remarkable relationship with her daughter, grandparenting her grandchildren, worshiping together. I've seen the two of you. I've been blessed by seeing you two lead worship and the passion for Christ comes through in your music and in the way that you worship him. It's a beautiful thing. And Shelly, you also are going to school right now, aren't you? Yes. And what what are you doing? What are you studying? I'm uh, going to school for drug and alcohol counseling. What a remarkable picture of redemption, <laughs> full circle. So I can imagine if I were addicted to drugs, you're the kind of person that I would need in front of me because you, you would know me better than I would know myself, yeah. I'm sure. So I would say to, to anyone who is listening, who is struggling with perhaps broken relationships too, I would challenge the adult children to give that parent a, an opportunity to demonstrate repentance and to uh, find your way back to one another through the power of forgiveness through Jesus mm-hmm. and the letting go of the guilt don't let the guilt of the past get in the way of reconciliation. Um, Bay, would, what would you say to uh, an adult child who is in the situation that you were in, a parent who has been able to overcome the drug addiction, but there's still all that mess in the relationship? What counsel would you give to that adult child? I would say pray. Pray for your parent, your mother or your father, whoever it is that's going through. Be patient, because I've learned that hollering and yelling, yelling and, and saying, you know, being angry, it doesn't solve. I, I think that may even cause the person to want to go use again. So being kind, and that can be very difficult. But again, prayer, patience, and kindness. And how about you, Shelley? What, what counsel would you give to... Um, someone who was a drug addict is now clean and wants to reconcile with their family, but maybe there's some resistance there. What counsel would you give? I would say to not despise the interruptions, the interruptions that may be a phone call or someone coming over to see how you're doing or this giving you this showing you love because those are the times when I believe that that that's God that's that's interrupting what you're going through this is Dr. Chuck Betters and I am so glad that you have listened to this interview it's a painful interview and it's also a uh, opportunity for all of us to look at the redemption that Christ offers And I am so thankful to Shelly and to uh, Bay for their willingness to put their story out there. You might be sitting in a similar circumstance. You might be experiencing the heartache and the brokenness that comes from drug addiction or being the one who is victimized by another's drug addiction. But I want to offer you the hope that both Shelly and Bay have experienced in their faith in Christ. Jesus came not only to take away our sins, but to also remove the guilt that comes with those sins. So when he pays the price, that price is in full. There is nothing left to forgive because he has removed our sins as far as the East is from the West. So I want to encourage you to use this resource 
either to help yourself or to help someone else who is experiencing the pain of addiction. If Mark Inc. Ministries can be of any help to you, contact us by way of our website at www.markinc.org. That's M-A-R-K-I-N-C dot org. And we will be more than happy to help you in any way that we possibly can. Father, I want to thank you for the love and the mercy and the grace you have extended to this family through some very, very painful times. You have brought them to this place where they can sing of your faithfulness. They can sing of your amazing love in the midst of trial. That you are a God who brings us out. You are a God who separates us unto yourself. You have called us a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a special, peculiar people unto yourself. And how grateful we are that we can hear this amazing story of redemption. We want to offer it up to you as our act of worship. And we pray that you will use this in ways we never dreamed possible. And that your word will not return unto you void. And we will give you all the praise for what you're going to do with this resource. In Jesus' name, amen.